Colin Allred is pushing an extreme liberal vision for America. Boys and girls locker rooms. Boys and girls bathrooms. Boys and girls sports. Well, it turns out Ted Cruz made a huge mistake and ran not one, but two ads calling those teenage girls boys. But they're not boys. They're both cis girls. And ironically, at least one of those two girls is actually transphobic. But because of Ted Cruz's ad, he opened those two minors up to anti-trans abuse and harassment from potentially millions of anti-trans bigots who now believe that those girls pose a threat to their daughters because Ted Cruz insinuated that they're dangerous. And what's even more embarrassing for his campaign is that they couldn't find a single example of a trans teen disrupting school sports in his own state, which is why he cherry picked an example from a state across the country in my state of Oregon. Now, the school district of those two girls is understandably furious in response to seeing this ad. The Hill reports, an Oregon school district on Thursday asked Senator Ted Cruz's campaign to take down two ads targeting transgender athletes because they include a photograph of two minor girls who are not transgender and whose parents did not give the Cruz campaign permission to use the photo. In an email sent Thursday to the Cruz campaign, the representative from the Beaverton school district requested the ads be pulled from any and all distribution platforms forms noting that the two athletes pictured are minors it is alarming that your campaign would have produced distributed promoted this ad with false information especially with minor children involved yeah and that right there is i think the crux of the problem you have a grown man with power and a national platform demonizing teenagers and potentially endangering their lives all for a political campaign ad it is truly vile and it speaks to the brain rot that transphobic bigots like ted cruz suffer from who feel like it's fine to incite harassment against literal children so long as they suspect that the children in question might be trans who does that it is genuinely sick, disturbing, and predatory behavior. And as we've often seen, this hyperfixation on trans people has led to anti-trans discrimination against cis people as well. And while trans people obviously bear the brunt of this discrimination, there has been more than enough instances of harassment directed against cis people for suspected of being trans to demonstrate how dangerous transphobia is right? The transphobes don't actually know who's trans and who isn't trans. So maybe they should stop speculating about it and just treat everybody like human beings. But of course, they can't do that because they're monsters. Ted Cruz is a monster. And he, I think, gets some sick thrill out of demonizing LGBTQ plus people, even though he has a daughter who is part of the community. It is truly disgusting. But I mean, by now, we all know that there's no low that Ted Cruz wouldn't stoop to if he thinks that there's some sort of a political advantage to be gained. This is a man who made a name for himself by being explicitly anti-LGBTQ+, and he just shifted his target from gays to a different member of the community, trans people. And now he's throwing children under a bus to prove a point about trans people. It is demented behavior. But the question is, where did he even find that photo in the first place? And why would he think that it's okay for him to use that photo in a political ad? Now, we know the answer. It's from an April report from Central Oregon Daily News where they talk about complaints over a trans high schooler that was allowed to compete in her school's track meet. Now, one of the girls featured in Ted Cruz's ad is a ninth grader whose name I won't share, and she took issue with her trans classmate being allowed to compete in the Need for Speed meet in Sherwood, Oregon. And in the report, she misgendered her and said that she saw her pass multiple girls. Now, I take issue with the so-called report because it basically is talking about school-wide bullying of a trans teenager, of one trans student, under the pretense of a legitimate concern being expressed by students and parents. And even though they did speak to one trans advocate who talked about the importance of inclusion for students, it still felt like this news report was an attempt to normalize bigotry against the trans students. So I understand why Ted Cruz would want to use this example in his ad. But thankfully, they did not share the name or the photograph of the trans student because I think they probably realized that would open her up to abuse and harassment. But there was this explicit assumption in the ad that the trans student in question had an unfair advantage. And this isn't something that is uncommon when we hear about these stories. But the report where they implicitly push this idea that trans students shouldn't be allowed to compete because this they have this unfair biological advantage ended up debunking their own myth. Case in point. 
The athlete finished as high as second place and in the top 10 of multiple events. In other words, the trans girl who we were told had an unfair advantage because she was beating all of the other girls did do really well, but she still lost to the cis girl in the end. Right. See, there's a reason why we never hear from the winners in these stories about the unfair biological advantage that trans students and trans competitors have because they beat the trans competitor. So it would be absurd for them to make that claim. There's a reason why we only hear from the people who didn't win. Individuals like Riley Gaines, for example, the notorious anti-trans swimmer who tied for fifth place with trans swimmer Leah Thomas and then went on to make a career about how unfair the sport was because a trans woman was allowed to compete. But I mean, you did pretty good. You tied with her and four other cis women beat the two of you. So maybe this is more about poor sportsmanship than it is about a trans person having an unfair advantage. You know, for some reason, we never hear the first place winners crying about how the trans person shouldn't have been allowed to compete. So, I mean, this to me, when I watch this segment, I don't know why it even got posted because it should have been a teachable moment. The adults should have explained to the children here, which are the students, the values of sportsmanship and about how practice makes perfect and how inclusion of their trans classmates is actually better because we want everybody to feel included and not left out. And if they were left out, then they would feel really bad as well. Instead, they allowed their children to engage in bullying effectively and the parents and the news report dogpiled on the one trans girl who probably felt horrified after seeing a whole ass report about her. Why? Because she did what other teenage girls do. She's being a kid and she was competing in sports. I don't blame the students for being transphobic, but I do blame the parents for instilling these transphobic values in those children and for not combating them when their kids express this transphobia. But that sick and twisted desire to bully a child there that we saw is exactly what Ted Cruz is counting on to win his election. And after the school district asked him to take down the ad, the campaign ended up responding by not addressing that request and instead doubling down on the transphobia while mischaracterizing the situation entirely. The Hill continues, a Cruz campaign spokesperson told The Hill that the photo features a female athlete who spoke out against boys playing in girls sports after participating in a track meet where a biological male beat female athletes and impacted individual and team medal results. Right, but I mean, isn't that the whole point if you're going to participate in a sporting event to impact the results? I mean, do you expect somebody to lose so as to make sure that it's fair? I mean, they're all competing. And of course, that trans person is also going to affect the results as all of the other cis students do. They just don't want the trans people to be included because they're transphobic. They don't care about fairness. If they did, they would invest more money in female sports and female athleticism. But instead at these schools, they're usually underfunded and there's just not enough interest in it. So they say, fuck it and just focus on the boys. But now they're pretending as if they care about girls while implying that those two teenage girls are actually boys. Now, even though the ad heavily implies that the girls in question are boys, the campaign doesn't seem to care because they think that it sufficiently proves the anti-trans point that they're trying to make. So it doesn't matter. They also made no mention of whether or not they'd actually respect the wishes of the school district and take down the ads, nor did they mention how the trans teen in question lost to a cis girl in the end, which kind of undermines the point that trans students have this advantage. We don't know the situations there, but if that trans girl has been on HRT for a long enough time, there's no biological advantage whatsoever. We're talking about ninth graders here. And, you know, he is implying that it's perfectly normal to attack a trans child overall, which is sickening. Attacking any child is disgusting, but they're basically defending their decision to attack a child. That's how low this fucking scumbag is. Again, this is predatory behavior, but it speaks to the level of desperation from Ted Cruz's campaign. But I'd be desperate too if I were in his shoes because the polls are consistently showing that he is tied with his Democratic opponent, Colin Allred. An internal Democratic Party poll shows that they're both at 46%. And in an appearance on Mark Levin's show on Fox News, Ted Cruz admitted that he could actually lose this election. And you can tell he's very scared. And I got to tell you, I'm getting pounded everywhere I go. Chuck Schumer and the Democrats are spending millions unloading on us. 
this race is going to end up, they're going to spend over a hundred million dollars from Chuck Schumer and George Soros. If you're in Texas, you turn on the TV, every second or third ad is an attack ad. And, and every day or two, we get another story. Schumer put another three million in. Schumer put another five million in. We've just got money flowing into this. Just a couple of days ago, we had a poll come out that showed this as a one point race. Kind of an interesting choice of words there, Ted. But needless to say, he is in very bad shape. But rather than adjusting and trying to come up with a message that actually resonates with regular people in Texas, he's choosing to hyper focus on the big bad trans boogeyman. But I mean, that's part of the reason why he's in such bad shape, because that strategy is a demonstrable failure. And I say this because a new data for progress poll found that voters are rejecting candidates pushing anti-trans legislation. 57 percent of voters and 54 percent of independents prefer a candidate who says that the government should stay out of people's private lives and that there is too much legislation targeting a small minority of the population. But it gets worse for Republicans because a plurality of voters believe that Republicans, not Democrats, have the more extreme stance on trans rights issues, even though Republicans are explicitly trying to portray Democrats as the extremists here. But there's more. A majority of voters believe that there's too much legislation targeting trans people, and this includes 59% of Democrats, 60% of independents, and 48% of Republicans as well, which is a plurality, by the way. Now, last but not least, 74% of Americans believe that trans people should be treated with respect and dignity. 61% think that it's sad and shameful that Republicans are using anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric as part of their campaigns, and 54% think that the political attack ads against trans people have gotten mean-spirited and out of hand. And as Ted Cruz whines about millions of dollars being spent against him, his party poured more than $65 million into anti-trans attack ads against Democrats since August. But yet, Ted Cruz is the one who's crying victim and implying that the attack ads against him by Democrats are unfair, even though he's the one who's demonizing a small percentage of the population in Texas that's already marginalized and under attack thanks to his party. It is a massive miscalculation because even though Americans are anti-trans by default in large part due to ignorance, the percentage of trans people is so small that it's hard to convince voters that this issue affects them personally when they've never even met a trans person in real life, let alone a trans athlete, which represents an even smaller proportion of a minority that's already super tiny. So while Republicans might be able to get people ostensibly to agree with them at face value before they do any research, they're still unable to raise the salience of this particular issue because you can't convince people that this issue affects them if they don't know anything about trans people and never met a trans people, or if they do meet a trans person, they realize, oh, they're kind of just like you and me. So that is a problem for him and he doesn't realize it. But this is actually counterproductive because if you are a trans person in Texas or you have trans friends or a trans family member, you're gonna be more motivated than ever to not only vote against this bigotry, but rally everyone you know to do the same. It doesn't have the same effect on the opposite side, but it does galvanize people who like trans people. So their anti-trans attack ads are backfiring because this issue isn't mobilizing anti-trans voters. It's only galvanizing trans allies. And this isn't conjecture. I'm not making this up. We know this because a large number of Republicans that ran anti-trans campaigns in 2022 and 2023, they got their asses handed to them. And now Republicans like Ted Cruz are doubling down on this losing strategy and can't seem to figure out why this election is so close in a deep red state like Texas. This is why, Ted, Texas is a red state and no amount of Democratic spending should make it this close. But it's close because of you. Now, the silver lining is that attitudes towards trans Americans are improving despite GOP fear mongering nonstop, whereas attitudes towards Ted Cruz, guess what? They're actually decreasing. I say this because in his own state of Texas, a public policy polling survey found that he had a negative favorability rating of negative six in August. But by September, it fell to minus eight. So as the ignorance dissipates and more people learn about trans people, they're beginning to accept them and like them. The same cannot be said about Ted Cruz because the more that people hear about him, the more they hate him. Hence why he's on the cusp of losing this election in the deep red state of Texas. Me, me, me. I'm Ted Cruz. Me, me.
alpha male, not a beta male.